today on an all-new Dr. Phil. The most controversial name of the summer. Karen has turned into a slang term describing women who lash out. My doctor would not let me wear that. She was coming at me like she's going to hit me. Yeah, the same kind of people that walk the this. Jews right into the gas tank. No. I've got 13 degrees in psychology. I'm a member of Mensa. What Kellyanne exhibits is a textbook narcissistic personality disorder. The mandatory mask policy is absolutely absurd. Do you have 13 degrees in psychology? I'm asking you if this is your property. They're assuming that a person of color can't live in their own neighborhood. You're being racist towards people of my color. Do you agree that Black Lives Matter? I believe Black Lives Matter just like all lives matter. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. back in studio for season 19. You will see a lot of safety adjustments to our set, including the fact that our studio audience is now a virtual audience. So good morning, everyone. Happy to see you guys here. Uh, Robin is here front and center, uh, not only supporting me, but so many of our courageous guests. She has been a selfless contributor to the show for 18 years, and that's never gonna change. So she's here with me as usual. <laughs> well, let's just get started, and it is a doozy today. I'm talking about the most controversial name of the summer. It's been used to describe a certain type of person, a woman, stereotypically white, middle class, and middle-aged, engaging in behavior deemed as aggressive, entitled, and sometimes racist. What name am I talking about? Karen. From refusing to wear a mask in public to demanding to see the store manager and in more serious cases, filing false police reports against people of color, these moments have been captured by onlookers armed with smartphones and then shared online for the whole world to see. Caught on camera, a racist rant turns violent as a woman uses a hammer to smash up her neighbor's car. Get the f out of this neighborhood. The name Karen has turned into a slang term describing women who lash out for no good reason, asking to talk to managers or even calling police. So you're not going to let me in to deliver this food. Don't deliver anything to Cell phone video shows a woman blocking the entrance to an apartment building, preventing a black food delivery man from doing his job. <laughs> A Queens woman is outraged and worried about possibly getting COVID-19 after a stranger coughed on her on purpose. This is the Starbucks where many people have showed up to drop money in a tip jar for a barista who was berated online for telling a woman to wear her mask. A video goes viral in Rancho Branch of a woman asking a landscaper for proof of his immigration papers. Can you show me your papers? Can you move away? No, I want to see your papers. You want to see your papers? Yes. Your immigration. One of the most notorious and viral Karen videos of the year took place in a supermarket just down the street from here in Los Angeles back in June. Now, the video shows a woman storming out of her local supermarket after being told to wear a mask. Now, that woman is here today for her first ever sit-down interview. She says that video tells only half of the story. Now, before we meet her, take a look at the clip that has everybody talking with over 15 million views. Grand opening weekend at this Trader Joe's, a video from opening night went viral. This is Karen. Following the state mandate, masks are required to enter this store. The woman in that cell phone video told me a medical condition prohibits her from wearing a mask. I have a breathing problem. My doctor would not let me wear a mask. So anyone harassing me to wear a mask you guys are violating federal laws. I decided to go to Trader Joe's on that day to pick up a few things. I walked 
straight to the store manager. She said, just for today, go ahead and do your shopping without your mask on. I see this man standing there, tall, middle-aged, older white guy shopper with a mask on. So he started screaming at me, you bitch, wear your mask. Then I reacted. You guys are violating federal law. Here I am surrounded by all these people mocking me, calling me Karen. I am not a Karen. Karen are people that judge others. I was not the one judging them. After this ordeal, unfortunately, I got a lot of attacks from friends. My stress level has gone up. I don't necessarily want to go deep into my condition because I don't have to. There's a HIPAA law that protects me from sharing with people. Whatever Karen is described as, I am so far from that. I was just a woman minding my business and I simply expressed my right to not wear a mask. I definitely do not think that the mask should be mandated. Hundreds and thousands of people die from the flu every year, but there's no frenzy about it. Okay, well, welcome. Hi, Dr. Phil. Uh, I'm glad to meet you. And nice to meet for, you. you said half of the story was told, so I want to give you every opportunity to tell the other half. You, you said the man looks to me like he was about to stab me, so you felt threatened. I did, most definitely. It almost felt like he's about to charge at me. And, you know, considering everything that the, we've been going through in this lockdown and hearing stories of people, I've heard a story in the beginning of the lockdown where um, people got stabbed in a grocery store. When I am hearing this man's hostility coming at me uh, with so much anger and, and just aggression, and he just kept going and going, I went, I felt almost like I'm experiencing PTSD. I got triggered. So in those moments, I just reacted because I felt like I don't know what he could do. He, for all I know, he could have ran at me and just stabbed me. You said that you had actually called the store manager ahead of time, but then you went to the wrong store. That is true. But what's important is that regardless of that, I was still escorted to the store manager and she gave me the permission. She said, just for today, go ahead and do their shopping just for today. Okay, so, so you had permission from the store manager. I had manager. permission. That's what people need to know. It's not like okay. uh, whatever stories they're putting out there. There's so many false narratives about what happened. They're saying they saw me with a mask on and that supposedly I walked in and it caused a scene. I was walking around and getting in people's faces completely, complete lies. So you weren't lies. coughing on people, sneezing on people? Absolutely not. You didn't <laughs> run through a line Absolutely uh, not. and burst into no. the store. Why did you say these were democratic pigs? In the last couple of months during this entire lockdown, I was like viciously harassed on my social media posts by people that are affiliated with the Democratic Party. Just because I had dif different ideologies than them. Okay, so, so in you... those moments, I felt like, you know, the way they were acting towards me and especially also calling me Karen, which is something that party, I think they invented that word Karen, uh, uh, it seems like. But so you, um, you equated them with people that were attacking you online. Yes, because of, yes, the way I you was being like, attacked. These are some of the people that are attacking yes. me online. And you yes. said you guys are breaking federal law. The American Disabilities Act. Uh -huh. It's a federal law making people with certain conditions like myself. I have a breathing condition uh -huh. through my nose um, or any medical condition that prevents them from wearing masks. There's actual law that makes uh, people like myself exempt from wearing the mask because it's not safe to wear the mask when you can't breathe. You can, su you can faint, you can suffocate. Okay. You eventually just left the store, right? I was being told, ordered by the store manager to leave. And I said, no, I'm not, because I knew I'm not doing anything wrong. I said, you need to call the cops. I was escorted out and I was waiting for the cops. Now I have to say something else happened while I was outside. The cops were not there yet. And there was a lady, she was so hostile. She started immediately yelling at me and yelling all kinds of obscenities. She was coming at me like she's going to hit me almost like face nose to nose and and I said what you're gonna hit me and that's when the manager told her to stop like she can't she was about to hit me so I was almost assaulted by a second person we do require a mask here on the Paramount lot I, I wear a mask when I'm not on yes. camera and thank you for complying with all yes. of that this morning although I cannot keep a mask on for long periods of time 
I was okay wearing it just for like a few minutes. Yeah. You know? Well, thank you for doing yeah. that. We reached out to the man who posted the video of Sandrella for a statement, but he declined. Next, we're adding a woman who is branded a racist Karen, you know, different, but still has that moniker for comparing mask wearers to people who walked the Jews right into the gas tanks. Confused? Well, you're not the only one, but maybe we can clear that up. We'll be right back. Anybody who is going to commit to this kind of civil obedience is the same kind of people that believe their government when they walk the Jews into the gas tank. Kellyanne has been branded a Karen by many people online. I think she's more of a COVID idiot. The term Karen is a racial label against white women with an opinion. It's absolutely ridiculous. The reason why I don't feel masks should be mandated, because there's a lot of different views on that. One minute he's saying masks are not that effective. The next minute he's saying, yes, you know, they are. You can't just believe what your government is enforcing on you blindly. If they say next, we're going to have alien invasion and we're supposed to hide, are they going to believe that too? They're slowly taking away our freedom. And that is not what this country was built upon. Well, I'm talking about the latest trend, uh, people taping and then posting videos that turn viral of women publicly branded Karen for behaving in a way many perceive as angry, entitled, and in some cases racist. My next guest chance encounter uh, was at an anti-mask rally uh, on the streets of Toronto, which resulted in an equally controversial viral video moment. Take a look. Very important. Good. We'll exempt you from wearing a mask. About a month ago, I was riding my bike through downtown Toronto, and I noticed about a dozen people who were holding placards. Their goal was to, quote, educate people on how they don't have to wear masks. They were handing out these little cards that had all sorts of what they called facts about how masks can deprive you of, of oxygen. When I was handed one, I just decided to rip it off. On July 7th, the mayor of Toronto brought into action a mandatory mask law. So we decided to gather in a group and oppose it. There was Brian Tao on his bicycle with a little camera around his neck. I jumped in. I decided, let me give him enough content to go viral. I said, you're the same kind of people that walk the Jews right into the gas tank. No. I've got 13 degrees in psychology. I'm a member of Mensa. I said the most absolutely ridiculous things a person could possibly say, and it worked. Kellyanne has been branded a Karen by many people online. I think she's more of a COVID idiot. Anybody who is going to commit to this kind of civil obedience is the same kind of people that believe their government when they walk the Jews into the gas tank. Kellyanne is seeking fame and notoriety through this. In some posts, Brian has labeled me an anti-Semitic, white, craziest Karen. Because he did that, you would not believe the threats. Somebody left feces at my front door with a note saying, we're going to kill you. The term Karen and is a racial label against white women with an opinion. It's absolutely ridiculous. I am the executive director for Smothers Against Distancing. MAG was created because there is a campaign to mandate masks on our children. What you're saying to me is that you want to put something on my child's face that is full of germs and then have them breathe that in for six to eight hours a day? What I find ironic is that these anti-mask groups are the ones who are promoting fear. Without them, I think people would be getting along with this pandemic a lot better. Look around, there's not people dying everywhere. We've got hospitals with furloughed doctors. Where's all the sick people? Brian and Kellyanne join me now from separate locations in Toronto uh, via Ionico. So I'm glad that both of you are here. Sandrella is here as well. Kellyanne, you guys were on the street corner and you were handing out flyers that were giving people information that was in support of not wearing masks. We were giving people access to information that was being oppressed from them. See, it seems that this, this entire narrative is one-sided and very biased, and people are not getting access to the opposite side of the argument. We are not anti-mask by any means. We're pro-information. Let's take a closer look at the flyer. Breathing through a mask 
decreases the amount of oxygen we need to live and be healthy and increases blood acidity and makes breathing difficult. Listen, I'm, I am not uh, a pulmonologist, so let me be very clear uh, about that. But I, I do have access to some of the top experts in the world, as you can imagine. And it appears that that assertion is absolutely false. Also, the World Health Organization on oxygen depletion said the prolonged use of medical masks can be uncomfortable for sure. However, it does not lead to CO2 intoxication nor oxygen deficiency. Okay, I didn't write the information on the flyer, Dr. Phil. And at the time that those flyers were handed out, the information from your experts was not yet released. And it certainly is... Science is ever-changing. You know that more than anybody. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, but the but, one thing that hasn't changed is the fact that the science is unsettled. Well, one thing is pretty consistent, and that is that mask uh, alone will not control people's exposure to COVID-19, but absolutely are an essential part of controlling the spread and the contraction of COVID-19. And we're not, not anti they, we're I, not, I'm not, I'm not against that. If you're sick, by all means, and you have to go out in public, by all means, wear a mask. But there is absolutely no reason and no logic to providing a one-size-fits-all solution to billions of people with individual health requirements. The mandatory mask policy is absolutely absurd. That's just absolutely not true, what you're just saying. Brian, Kellyanne says she's here today to get an apology from you. I'm going to let you respond right after the break. She declares herself a biracial racist, okay. well, whatever that is. He wants to know, and I want to know, and Sandrella wants to know what that means. I'd like to get a word in edgewise. I want Brian Tao to apologize to me and to apologize to my children for labeling me a racist, which was absolutely false. I said you're the same kind of people that walked the Jews right into the gas tank. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Got you on video. What Kellyanne exhibits is a textbook narcissistic personality disorder. I'm more than positive if Brian Tao comes on this show, Dr. Phil is going to tear him a new something <laughs> for his intentional public shaming of others. Well, I'm joined by Brian and Kellyanne, who recently came to verbal blows in a video over the effectiveness of masks that went viral. Now, Kelly was branded a Karen online, but Brian branded uh, Kelly a racist after she likened his pro-mask stance to pro-Nazis who sent Jewish people to concentration camps. Brian, she said she's looking for a, an apology from you. Uh, do you have an apology for uh, Kellyanne? Uh, no, I mean, certainly not. Uh, one of the things I do want to clear up is that I don't believe that simply being anti-mask is racist, racist or vice versa. Um, I did note, however, that this, this term uh, of calling her a racist actually came from her Facebook profile, which I checked after the rally that we had. And she apparently gave herself a nickname, or I don't know where it came from, but she calls herself a biracial racist. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. I'm not sure where that comes from. Uh, I don't know if she's racist. I don't have the proof. But to me, the evidence seeing that the other people who were involved in the anti-mask movement, there does seem to be a possible undercurrent of white supremacy and racism involved here. Do you have 13 degrees in psychology? Obviously not. Do you have 195 IQ? Obviously not. Are you a member of Mensa? Not anymore, no. Brian, making this a racial or white supremacy issue, it has nothing to do with the issue of masks. I don't know why they're constantly talking about racism and supremacy and all that. That is outrageous. Well, I, I think Brian's point was, mm -hmm. the first thing he said was, this racist element has absolutely nothing to do with the mask element of this story. He said, I went to her Facebook 
and she declares right. herself a biracial racist, okay. well, whatever that is. It's hard to hear sometimes. I don't know what that, is, what that means. So we no, can... he, I, we don't either, and yeah. I think he wants to know, and I want to know, and Sandrella wants to know what that means. I'd like to get a word in edgewise. We're waiting, we're waiting for you to edge it in. Okay, so first and foremost, I did not refer to pro-mask wearers as obedient citizens like that, that were walking the Jews into the gas tanks. I was assaulted two seconds before Brian Tao approached us, which he witnessed by another man on a bicycle because I was not wearing a mask. And then he decided to come over and start to provoke everybody. And I said that people who think they have the right to force masks on other people because of a government narrative or, or to assault people because they don't want to comply with a government mandate are no different than the obedient citizens that listen to Hitler. It's the same, and I, and I stand by what I said. You may feel like you, you have the right to say no to wearing a mask, but if you say no to wearing a mask, do you also have the responsibility to then respect the rights of others to not put them in jeopardy, if in fact it is jeopardy, to be around them if you don't wear a mask? Mm -hmm. Does the right of not wearing a mask come with the responsibility to be extra cautious? Yes, and I do take those precautions by respecting the six feet distance, not to sneeze on them, not to cough on them, make sure that if I, if I ever feel sick, like if I have a cold or flu maybe, stay home? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, but, but here's a question that I have, Dr. Phil. If masks work so well, as you stated, according to what the CDC and the WHO state, then if they're wearing a mask, then if, and if the masks work so well, then why are people so afraid of catching it from someone who's more than six feet or six feet away from them? The CDC guidelines, the World Health Organization guidelines, you listen to the experts that I've had on the show, you, you talk to the infectious disease experts, they will tell you that the best approach is a multi-layered approach. Social distancing, wearing masks, washing your hands, being careful about cleaning surfaces, that it's a number of things that all together uh, can be effective in quelling this pandemic. I think we have to dispel myths. I think we have to put out truth. And then we have to take the politics out of it. And the reason that I'm talking about this flyer uh, that you're putting out is I think there were I don't know how many things there, six of them, every one of those things is false. And I, I think that is a very dangerous narrative to be putting out. It wasn't a very da dangerous narrative two months ago before new information and new data was released. No, that's just not true. It was, it was false when you put it out, it's false today. The man behind one of the most watched Karen videos of the summer uh, is right here for his first uh, talk show interview as well. We're going to add him to this conversation. We'll be right back. Support is growing for a man who was confronted by a woman for writing Black Lives Matter in front of his own home. I'm asking you if this is your property. Why are you asking? They're assuming that a person of color can't live in their own neighborhood. That's Karen, and she's calling the cops. big story that we're following for you this morning. A San Francisco supervisor has introduced a new proposal named the Karen Act. Yeah, this new ordinance, if it gets passed, would put some kind of criminal charge on a person who decides to call 911. Usually people do this when they have some kind of racial bias or discrimination. It's called someone who's acting like a, quote, Karen. But this Karen Act is spelled with a C. It stands for Caution Against Racially Exploitative in Non-Emergency and of course, it's named after Karen. Now, my next guest says he was stenciling Black Lives Matter outside his home, where he's lived for 18 years, and he was approached and reprimanded by a local couple. Their exchange, which he caught on camera, has been viewed millions of times. Take a look. 
support is growing for a man who was confronted by a woman for writing Black Lives Matter in front of his own home. I'm asking you if this is your property. Why are you asking? Because well, it's private property. Last month, during the nation's turmoil over Black Lives Matter, I decided to write Black Lives Matter on our house. I was interrupted by the couple asking me if this was defacing private property. You don't know if I live here or if this is my property. We actually do know. That's why we're asking. Oh, really? Because you live here, right? You said so. Because we know the person who does live here. I asked them very clearly, you don't know if I live here, to which they responded, no, we know you don't live here because we know who the owner is. I'm on my home turf. I'm standing in front of the house that I've rented for 18 years. Its street value is around 13 million. They're assuming that a person of color can't live in their own neighborhood. Oh, well then, call the cops. I'll be right here. They called the police, and in two minutes, the police came to the house. I recognized the police officer immediately, said, hey, you live here. I said, yeah, I do. And he said, I believe they had a problem with my skin. I think they had a problem with the message. And I also believe that they thought I was hurting property values. That's Karen, and she's calling the cops. Since I posted the video, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. This one's from Hawaii. Alo Aloha. I was really moved by for San Quentin, people in prison. I'm using three words, Black Lives Matter, but it might as well say equality for everybody. It's the same message. Okay, well, James, thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Phil. What do you think the motive was? Did she object to what you were writing? I believe it was because of the color of my skin. Um, and I believe it was the message itself that she had right. a problem with because she was quite aware. I was, wa I was working with chalk. Okay, well, here's what they said when they called the police because we got the actual 911 call. There's a guy stenciling on a building on golf. What is it? Black Lives Matter. He's all set up. He has stencils, he has chalk. Is it Somebody. A home? Yes. Do you know who lives at the house? I don't. Then uh, what race is he? Hispanic, 45-ish. Yes, do you want to meet with officers? Do you want to meet with officers? I don't really want to be on social media. Oh, I think they'll be calling me a Karen. Well, we reached out to Lisa and Robert for a statement, but we received no response as of the tape date. Robert and Lisa issued public apologies uh, to James in the wake of the viral video sensation. Here's an excerpt from Lisa's apology to James. When I watched the video, I'm shocked and sad that I behaved the way I did. I did not realize at the time that my actions were racist and have learned a painful lesson. I'm taking a hard look at the meaning behind white privilege and am committed to growing from this experience. Here's an excerpt from Robert's apology. He says, uh, I've had my eyes opened wide to my own ignorance of racial inequality, and I have thought a lot about my own personal blind spots. I was wrong to question, pronounce your last name for me. Oh, Juanillo, Juanillo. Uh, and I was wrong to call the neighborhood police watch. Uh, it was wrong, and I am profoundly sorry for treating him with disrespect. I absolutely agree. He treated me with disrespect, but I think it's downplaying the fact that she was calling in a lethal response for completely non-criminal behavior. And they're also kind of claiming that they're just becoming aware of racial inequality in America. Where have they been? Yes, I have light skin color, but to say that I have white privilege and to label me as Karen is outrageous. It is so racist. That's your white privilege speaking. I'm asking you if this is your property. Why are you asking? Because well, it's private property. Well, well, then call the cops. I'll be right here. You think it's wrong that he posted this? Absolutely. You're, you're being racist towards people of my color, and I was born in Beirut, Lebanon. I came when I was 12 years old. Yes, I have light skin color, but to say that I have white privilege and to label me as Karen is outrageous. It is so racist. Have you ever been pulled over by the police for speeding? Like, of course, has uh, your not first speeding, thought but... ever been, uh -huh. this is how I'm going to die? No. Because that's your white privilege speaking. But that's what you believe. That's your white privilege. But then you're enforcing your views on others. You just, you just answered my question. Why do you feel like you're going to get shot at? Why? 
because it happens every day to people of color. Because That's you, why black uh -huh. lives matter. That's why we're not talking about all lives matter or to, white I'm lives sorry. matter because uh. there's not a problem with white people being shot in their bedrooms, while they're running, while they're breathing, oh, you don't think there's while they're people existing. That have been shot? They, just don't, they don't talk about it on the news black media. Li do you they, agree that they, black they lives matter? I believe black lives matter just like all lives matter. We, I matter, Armenian lives matter, Lebanese lives matter, Chinese lives matter, all lives matter. But you understand though that all lives aren't mm -hmm. being executed on the street. Oh, and it's to, black well, lives in America you, like, because uh -huh. of 400 years of systematic oppression yeah. that are, that we're, that's the problem that we're trying to solve and that we're We've focusing on. You're distracting. I think Black Lives Matter is an important movement. And I think it helps raise awareness of the many issues that are facing the black community. This movement requires me and my viewers to challenge ourselves to really think and to act in a more purposeful way how we can address the racism that we witness in our lives. And it's past time that we as a society act to help address these issues. And my hope is that we can all work together uh, to do better through peaceful protests and by educating ourselves about and then supporting important legislation because I think that's where the rubber meets the road uh, and making smart, informed, personal choices about our neighbors. Absolutely. So, you know, that's what it means to me and Robin and I have talked about it uh, a lot because it's been brought into very, very sharp focus. What are we doing with the word Karen? Why isn't the word Ken or Bill? or Bob. Please don't pretend that the women are not doing something wrong. Joining me now on Ionico is adjunct professor of sexual violence at the New England School of Law and advocate for women's constitutional rights, Wendy Murphy, who strongly believes the term Karen is deeply misogynistic. I'm also joined by Dr. Nasanga Burton, who is professor at Emory University in Atlanta, specializing in the intersection of race, class, gender, and sexuality uh, within the media. Dr. Burton believes women branded Karen are getting off lightly and could be called far worse. Wendy, let me, let me start with you. You've been listening and hearing everything that's been said, what do you have to add to this conversation? My concern is the singling out of women for this special derogatory name. So what are we doing with the word Karen? Why isn't the word Ken or Bill or Bob? And let's even say the ones that are popping up on the videos are white women. That does not mean to me that it's fair to call them entitled or acting with supremacy because women aren't even equal in this country yet. So when I hear anyone call any woman of any color entitled or supreme, it just, you know, it's like fingers on a chalkboard. Dr. Burton, you want to, you, you had some things to add to this. Some <laughs> of her points you agree with and some you absolutely do not agree with. Yeah, I, I agree with Wendy um, when she says that women are a disenfranchised group historically. That is accurate. However, um, this the idea um, that all women are the same is false. Um, race does matter. And when you do things, right, you have freedom of speech, but that doesn't mean that there's freedom from consequences. OK, and so when you do things and when you say things that put people in harm's way based on their race, that is called a racist act. There are real outcomes that come with that, right? So when you call the police on this gentleman right here, they could show up and based on these historic, and this is historic and systemic issues as it relates to race and racism in this country, there could be real consequences, Correct. all right? So when we think about a Karen, if we're not talking about a person, we're talking about a behavior that is exhibited by people. Right? They're male Karens. You're right. There are some black people that are Karens. They're on the web too. But I don't see you having a show about that. All right? We're focusing on 
white women, again, because white women are <laughs> oppressed. That is correct. But black women share that category, Wendy. All right. And yes, if you layer on racism, if you layer on elitism and classism, that means we have different outcomes than you. We're on the centennial of the passage of women's suffrage, right, of the 19th Amendment. White women did not allow black women to participate in that movement. So we had to create our own. And then we had to force our way into the movement. OK, so I'm not saying we don't have shared histories and legacies. We absolutely do. We have shared experiences of oppression. We absolutely do. But please don't negate or pretend that racism within the women's community, a lot of that based on these hierarchies, right, that are imposed by society, don't exist. And please don't pretend that the women who are being um, engaging in some of the most nefarious behavior um, are not doing something wrong. You know, Karen is kind of benign. That's like the most benign words you can use for someone who <laughs> lies repeatedly, like one of uh, Dr. Phil's guests, someone who inserts themselves into someone's life, someone who then tries to use, as the gentleman said, lethal force against that person because they won't comply because they're trying to police them. And then they have to deal with a police officer or anybody else for that matter. So that is a serious consequence. It is. And it should not but happen. You did, but you and we not, do have to call that out. And, and you know, all respect, um, because I hear what you're saying, I think the point for me is that we have to stop dividing women. Women are pitted against each other in all sorts of ways that make us less effective as a united force. It doesn't mean we don't have differences, but why are we prioritizing the bad behavior of women, period? I don't care if it's black women or I, white women. Why is this not about men? Many, many, I, many more men behave badly. And I just want to clarify one thing. When you look mm -hmm. back in history at the ways that women were divided based on race, and there are, there are important moments in history um, that matter, and we need to keep talking about that. But you'll notice, if you really dig, that it wasn't white women acting unilaterally against white, uh, against black women. It was white women succumbing to the pressure of white men for political reasons, forcing them to divide, lining up with each other politically against or in favor of the 19th Amendment based on how white men felt or, you know, how they felt about uh, the South or black people in the South. It was always about white men forcing women to fight each other. But and that I am done elite, with that. I don't want that, that anymore. Not, but that does not, it, it doesn't matter the cause. That does not alleviate you from what was done. All right. That does not alleviate white women. But let's blame the, the right person. Played, right. Let's no, blame the right I am. Person. I'm blaming, uh, right. Men, white, white men. men. No, and white women. No, no. And white women. In this particular case, because what I'm saying is we do have shared histories. We do. But in these particular cases, some of these women are really acting on the most vile and racist stereotypes about people of color that exist. And so that is being Ray, racist. Then call her racist. Then okay, hold on. Racist. I got to interrupt you here. I, I got to interrupt you because we've got to take no a break. But I wanted to let this go on because y'all were saying some great things I wanted my viewers to hear. But we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. If I was a woman and my name happened to be Karen, I would really hate that, that that had become the moniker for this very negative situation. And, you know, Sandra, thank you for being here today. Thank I know you. we're freezing you, you out. Me. You're right under a vent here. and We're freezing you to death. Okay. Uh, and James, thank you for coming up and talking about this and, and being such a gentleman about the whole thing. Uh, I would like to thank all of my guests today that uh, have participated, including Wendy Murphy and Dr. Burton. For more information about today's show, you can log on to drphil.com. You can also join me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Don't forget to subscribe to uh, Robin's podcast. I've got a secret. I have a sneaking suspicion she's going to be in touch with Wendy and Dr. Burton to have a conversation with them as well, and I hope they'll certainly participate. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.